The race is on to create the most streamlined passenger EV, and here's Hyundai's contender, the Ioniq 6, which slips through the air at just 0.21 CD. The result is a possible 338 mile range that beats many obvious rivals, and brings this saloon counterpart to the Ioniq 5 right into contention if you're looking at cars like the Polestar 2 and the Tesla Model 3. Hyundai's lately reinvented itself as a creator of interesting cars, particularly EVs. The Ionic 5 of 2020 really caused a stir, and this, its saloon showroom stablemate, the Ionic 6, will get the neighbours talking too. There's no way you would know that those two cars share everything under the skin because the Ionic 6 looks completely different, not only to the 5 but to everything else on the road. The shape said to be inspired by streamliner models of the 1930s and 40s. Styling team head Simon Lowsby cites the 1947 Stout Scarab, the Phantom Corsair and the Saab Ursaab as major influences. Nope, we don't remember them either. Anyway, the whole point of going the streamliner route was for Lowsby and his team to gain the industry's first sub 0.20 CD drag factor coefficient. They didn't quite manage that, but got close enough, 0.21 CD, to make possible an impressively long EV driving range figure. That might get you interested in this car, but if you choose it, it'll be because of one thing and one thing only, the way it looks. Like it, and you'll really like it. The pre-launch first edition version of this car sold out here in just 24 hours. Longer term Ionic 6 success might prove more challenging for Hyundai given the prices being asked here and the strength of the EV segment competition. So, is this car more than just a Korean curiosity? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. You'll need to be someone unafraid to make a statement if you want an Ionic 6. Will the driving experience be equally extrovert? The futuristic cabin vibe certainly seems to suggest that. So get comfortable and with the graphic perambulations on the two screens in front of you out of the way, you're ready to press the black EV start stop button in the middle of the dash. The whole start procedure with its associated bings and bongs feels more like the kind of thing you'd activate with a domestic appliance. But the chimes get more urgent as you twist the thick lower right steering wheel gear shift stalk into D, ready for the urgent burst of torque that usually propels EVs like this away from rest. If you've been persuaded by the 911 style rear end that this is some sort of EV sports saloon, the thrust away from rest isn't quite as startling as you might hope. But even in this lower powered 228 PS rear driven model, it's plenty swift enough away from standstill at 7.4 seconds before tailing off a little in typical EV fashion as the speed rises towards the modest 115 mile an hour maximum. As usual with Hyundai Motor Group EVs, the way the power comes in as you build up speed and the way the brake regeneration kicks in as you lift off feels all very natural. The level of drive formatting on offer might initially sound somewhat baffling. Four drive modes, four levels of brake regeneration and four options for so-called active sound design electronic powertrain noise. Actually though, things could hardly be simpler when it comes to the drive modes. Eco feels lethargic and the sparky sports setting decimates the drive range. So you'll nearly always stay in the default normal setting. Fiddling with the metallic brake regeneration paddles is unnecessary, provided you're happy with the Max Regen iPedal setting. And most owners having tried the weird spaceship style noise settings will probably turn them off. For those who do feel the need to more specifically tailor the drive experience, 
Hyundai provides an EV performance tune-up system which allows you to adjust steering effort, power output, accelerator sensitivity and driveline mode. There would be no point in this car looking like it does if all the efforts at aerodynamic streamlining didn't make a radical difference to range. Well, here's the figure, 338 miles, which applies to this 228 PS rear motor model. Nowhere near segment leading, but decently better than the class norm. The alternative dual motor all-wheel drive version doesn't give you much less, 322 miles, despite the fact that with a motor on the front axle as well as one at the rear, total power rises quite a lot to 325 PS, with 255 newton meters of extra torque, 605 in total. All enough to reduce the rest to 62 miles an hour time to just 5.1 seconds. And if that's not fast enough, Hyundai's also developed a frantic N version, previewed at the time of our film by an extreme-looking RN22E concept model. All Ionic 6 variants sold in our market use the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and should be able to regularly crest 300 miles between charges. If having chosen this test car's top ultimate level of specification and you're rather nerdily intent on maximising this, your dealer will suggest the option of digital side mirrors, which apparently had 0.9 miles of range but feel awkward and unnatural to use. With these fitted and the smaller 18-inch wheel rims that are available in other markets, the Korean brand says an Ionic 6 would be able to travel up to 384 miles between charges. Away from Matters EV, on the move you'd expect the drive experience to be very little different from that of the Ionic 5, since the mechanicals are almost exactly the same. Fortunately, it's a little better, probably because of this saloon model's slightly lower centre of gravity. It seems to have a different tune to its 5-link rear suspension too, less unsettled by porous surfaces. But the car doesn't ever ride them particularly smoothly, and potholes trouble this Hyundai far more than you'd hope with a luxury saloon. Plus, speed humps are crashed over on the front axle, though a little more subtly dispatched by the one at the rear. For these and other reasons, adaptive damping would suit this car, but Hyundai doesn't offer it. As you might expect, this Ionic's softly sprung comfort-orientated damping feels more at home on the highway. This would certainly be a relaxed conveyance for longer trips, though as so often in EVs, all the absence of engine noise does is to highlight the tyre roar and suspension creak cruising soundtrack you normally wouldn't hear. But helped by those streamlined aerodynamics, it's still very pleasantly quiet and there's the required level of semi-autonomous tech that customers will be expecting for this kind of money, in this case a navigation-based smart cruise control setup that uses the navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves or straights on highways and when activated can automatically adjust the car's speed for safer driving and to suit posted limits. As with the 5, the steering's accurate and responsive without ever being particularly feelsome, whichever of the drive modes you choose. But an Ionic 6 can be decently engaging on the right kind of secondary route, aided by a special integrated drive axle which combines wheel bearings with the drive shaft to transmit power to the tarmac in a way that improves handling stability. As with the Ionic 5 though, it's only when you adopt a more relaxed gait that the car properly feels in its element. Hyundai says its look design strategy is intended to give each model its own unique appearance, like the pieces of a chessboard. Increasingly distinct pieces, as it turns out, in terms of the brand's most recent two designs before this one, the Ionic 5 and the Tucson SUV. Is this really the same company known so much in the last few decades for stultifying blandness? Well, there's certainly none of that here or any real form of family resemblance. At first glance, it's hard to believe the Ionic 6 is even related to the Ionic 5 it shares all its mechanicals with. 
it's as curvaceous as its stablemate is boxy. And it's not even the same size at 4,855 millimeters long, being 220 millimeters lengthier. It's from here that you get the full electrified streamliner effect that we first saw in the brand's Prophecy Concept EV of 2020, with its swept back roof and super short front overhangs. The aerodynamic issues around which are cleverly resolved here by wheel gap reducers that minimize the empty space between the front bumper and the tires. The bits you can't see are equally sleek with a full lower cover and optimised deflectors smoothing air passage across the undercarriage and creating a 0.21 CD drag coefficient that's one of the lowest of any car in the world. That's based around the use of the 20 inch wheels fitted for our market. Sustainability is very much a theme. Cladding around the bodywork is fashioned using recycled pigment paint from end of life tyres. There's polyurethane bio paint on the doors derived from vegetable oils and the body panel finishes feature bamboo charcoal pigment paint. In an effort to reference brand identity, Hyundai integrates over 700 parametric pixels into various places in this design. For example, you'll find them here at the front in the headlamps, in the front lower sensors and around the air vent garnishes and the twin creased bonnet is capped by this freshly designed flat type Hyundai badge. And at the rear, well, you might think there's a bit of a Porsche influence. The Taycan front resemblance matched with a 911 style look here at the rear, where the swept back tail conceals a boot rather than the expected hatch. Particularly noticeable is this elliptical wing inspired spoiler with its boat tail structure. A more parametric pixel LED light graphics feature here on what looks like a solar panel but isn't. And those parametric pixels reappear again within the tail lamps and even in these lower vertical separation traps on either side of the bumper. Of course, as usual though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely Hyundai's second implementation of its eGMP platform created to underpin the whole new generation of Hyundai, Kia and Genesis branded EVs that will be filling our roads for the remainder of this decade. So avant-garde outside, what might the cabin hold in store? A lot more of the same, though you'll already be familiar with a lot of it if you previously tried an Ionic 5. Hyundai design chief sang Up Lee describes it as a mindful cocoon that aims to be practical, user-friendly and sustainable. It's all of these things and there's certainly a feeling of plush environmentalism here, but we're not entirely certain that it offers the kind of deeply luxurious quality a car with this price tag ought to have. Unfortunately, the fascia has been clearly designed around incorporating the optional digital side mirrors that most Ionic 6s won't be specified with understandably because they're more awkward and less intuitive to use than the conventional door mirrors they replace. Those digital mirrors would sit in these upturned collar cuff style panels at either end of the dashboard. Not much more aesthetically pleasing is the steering wheel which has a lower left side driving mode button. Two spoke tillers usually look awkward and this one especially so with its large almost oval centre bezel which with this top ultimate spec is large for a reason to house a row of little interactive pixel lights that signify one of six different vehicle status formats. Welcome, voice recognition, EV ready, reverse lights on, battery status and drive modes. They illuminate red when you select sport. All versions get a configurable multicolor ambient lighting system and that changes with drive mode selection too, most notably in a strip underlining horizontal vents that stretch across to the passenger door. Apparently up to 4096 colour combinations are selectable and they can be set to change in brightness as you go quicker. There's no Universal Island sliding centre console like you can get in an Ionic 5, which is a pity because when retracted back, that feature emphasises the completely flat floor made possible by the EV drivetrain, imbuing a roomy feel. You don't really get that here because Hyundai has filled what ought to be empty space with this upper bridge panel that doesn't quite join the dash, incorporating switches and storage sections that could quite happily have been more conventionally relocated elsewhere. 
The electric window buttons arguably should have been. The objective, though, was to declutter the unusual door cards, which don't have any handles. You pull instead on this backlit rail. Other trendy design touches are plentiful, like the huge glove box that's actually a slide-out tray, the alloy pedals, and the chunky, though rather phallic, lower right-hand wheel stalk that takes care of shift-by-wire gear selection. As we suggested earlier, virtually all of the interior touch points, the seats, the headliner, the door trim, the floor and the armrest, are fashioned from eco-friendly, sustainably sourced materials such as recycled plastic bottles or plant-based and natural wool-derived yarns, while the eco-process leather and the bio-source paint both use plant-based extracts. Enough of the environmentalists, let's talk screens. The same two from the Ionic 5, as with that car, both 12.3 inches in size and both mounted together with a single frame stuck rather awkwardly on top of the dash. Through the wheel, you view Hyundai's driver's supervision instrument cluster display with graphics reminiscent of a piece of uh, corrugated iron with speed on the left and EV range data on the right. This isn't one of those screens that can be configured every which way, but if you've avoided base trim, it does feature the brand's clever blind view monitor that gives you rear camera screens that flash up on either side of the screen when you activate the indicators. This display's standard functionality is all about a central section with selectable drive assist, car, nav and info options. And a line of little data entries along the bottom of the monitor positioned either side of a central mile per kilowatt hour meter so you can see electricity consumption in real time. Drive range and an odometer sit to the right of this with battery capacity, drive mode and your chosen regenerative brake setting to the left. Everything else you'll need is to be found on this central full-touch infotainment display, which, as usual with Hyundai Group models, has two main home screen pages. One simple uncluttered one with a battery graphic, range, temperature, audio and navigation. Or you can swipe left across to a display full of little icons, all of which can be moved about to your preferences, much like your phone. You can also create a split-screen format, say with EV and audio info, However you choose to view, there's lots of really neat stuff here. As befits a sophisticated EV, the usual Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone projection is of the wireless kind. The surround view monitor fitted to Ultimate models is especially clever, with side, back and zeroed in overhead views, plus a rather cool 360 degree sweep. And the screen's built-in dynamic voice recognition system, voice control not only deals with media, and destination inputs, but can also operate heat for the seats and the wheel and even open the boot. Navigation routes are calculated using a powerful server located in a Blue Link cloud, which is continually updating itself with charging station locations. And on that subject, there's a comprehensive EV section for your charging regime with a beautifully concise home screen that tells you at a glance pretty much everything you really need to know. Climate controls, thankfully, have been separated out into this little silver keyed panel to the left of the starter button, though there are also climate and heating and ventilation icons on the centre screen, which, rather confusingly, seem to do exactly the same thing. Both link you through to Hyundai's usual and very useful auto dehumidify and auto defog functions, plus a smart ventilation option and the helpful ability to be able to alter rear cabin climate and backseat heating from here at the front. Other centre screen features include voice memo, so you can dictate to the car as you drive, a quiet mode that restricts the volume of the stereo speakers and plays audio output only through the front ones, so that rear seat passengers can get to sleep on longer trips. There's a blue link section with calendar and weather applications, and you can even use it to follow scores from your favourite sports team. And a Hyundai Live section briefs you on traffic, local charging stations and parking availability. What else? Well, a head-up display is standard above base trim, and talking of forward viewing, that's slightly hampered by these chunky A-pillars, which, with this top ultimate trim, get these neat little built-in speakers for the excellent Bose audio system. All-round visibility is obviously nothing like as good as it is in the boxy, glassy Ionic 5, also hampered with wide C-pillars, though it's aided by parking sensors and a rear camera. You sit a little higher up than you might expect to if you viewed this car on arrival, as some sort of sports saloon, 
but it's easy to find a comfortable driving position and the powered heated seats come with lumbar support. Avoid base trim and they come in relaxation form, in which guys they can be reclined almost horizontally, though you don't get the lovely power retractable carve rests that feature in the similarly configured seats available in an Ionic 5. You should still though be able to comfortably nod off for 40 winks while powering up at your local charging station. Let's finish up front here with a look at cabin storage. The central bridge panel we referenced earlier has a vast lower storage tray that could take a handbag. Plus there's a useful stowage box between the seats, incorporating a couple of USB-C ports and including a little cubby just ahead of the lid catch. Beyond the electric window switches, the upper part of this bridging panel includes a couple of uncovered cup holders with a wireless charging mat and a USB-A port at its far end below the climate controls. We mentioned the big slide out glove box, though most of its space is taken up by the handbook, which you might find unnecessary given that there's a selectable digital version of that manual on the center screen. The doors incorporate narrow bins with small bottle holders and an overhead sunglasses compartment has been overlooked, but there are the usual ticket clips in the sun visors. Now, you might expect this car's swept back roof and 50 millimeter wheelbase reduction over the boxier Ionic 5 to compromise things a little in the rear. So let's find out. Actually, it's not too bad at all for a couple of adult six-footers. Headrooms affected a little, of course, by having a roof line with the curvature of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, and a six-footer's forehead would be pretty close to the roof liner. Still, thanks to Hyundai's eGMP platform and its long 2,950mm wheelbase length, there's an impressive amount of legroom. You really do get room to stretch right out here, and even with a six-footer up front, there are no knee space issues at all, especially with these relaxation front seats fitted, which are 30% thinner than the standard spec chairs fitted to the base spec model. All of which is just as well, first because it's difficult to slide your feet beneath the seats in front, and secondly because this bench doesn't slide backwards like it does in the Ionic 5. The underpinnings are flat too, so no central tunnel to impede a centre seated passenger. Above where it would normally be is a narrow cubby and a couple of USB-C ports. You get twin vents too, though surprisingly given the price and positioning of this car, Hyundai doesn't provide a tri-zone climate control panel to go with them, even as an option. Neatly though, the brand does provide these useful switches on the side of the front passenger seat, so that if you're seated behind it and there's no one in front of you, it's easy to push it further forward. Beware though, if you regularly carry children who tend to fiddle, but forget luxury and concentrate on sustainability. Take the carpet down here, fashioned from abandoned fishing nets found in ocean and coral reef waters. These are recycled into regenerated nylon yarn before being turned into carpet. Despite the provision of these tiny rear quarter light windows without the glass sunroof, only fitted up front but lacking with entry level trim, it might be somewhat dark and dismal back here unless you happen to have chosen this car's rather artificial feeling, eco leather upholstery coloured in this optional light grey rather than the usual black. With the cloth seats in base premium trim, a dark finish is the only one on offer, such as a darker ambience might draw your attention to the fact that, rather meanly, Hyundai hasn't provided the individual reading lights you'd normally expect to find in the back of a mid-sized saloon. You'd think installing those would be a higher priority than fitting seat heating back here, which is standard across the range. As at the front, there are no door handles back here, just the same backlit stitched rail. And with these rear door cards, which feel rather cheaply surfaced in their upper sections, you don't get door bins either, just little bottle holders. Conventional features include cup holders in the central armrest, a coat hook in the driver's side grab handle and netted seat back pockets. Here's something that isn't conventional though, this little lower 250 volt 16 amp 3 pin V2L or vehicle to load port, only usable when the ignition's on, great not only for a laptop or a phone, but also maybe even slightly bigger items you might be carrying, like say an electric scooter or a drone. It's a standard feature across the range.
Using an extra cost adapter, you can also activate a second V2L port here within the powered driver's side charging flap, where you'll find the usual conventional charging socket. Here embellished with 10 illuminating pixel squares designated battery charge status. This second V2L socket is arguably more useful because you can use it when the ignition's off. So for instance, when you're camping to power a kettle, a microwave oven, a mini fridge or an air pump. You could even use it to power another EV. If a friend or family member who has one should find themselves stranded, chargeless at the side of the road. Although the V2L port output is limited to 3.6 kilowatts, so it will only trickle charge. Enough with that, let's finish with a look at the boot. Now, the lid for it is electrically powered and can be operated with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper should you be approaching your Ionic 6 laden down with bags. The lid rises to reveal a slightly restricted opening to a shallow cargo area that goes quite a long way back but must be accessed over a high sill beyond which you reach a predictably high load platform. Those huge battery packs have to sit somewhere. Cargo capacities rated at 401 litres, about the same as a Polestar 2, which is 126 litres less than an Ionic 5, but more relevantly, 24 litres less than a Tesla Model 3 and about 80 litres less than you get in a conventionally engined mid-size saloon like a BMW 3 Series or an Audi 84. The Tesla's trunk is more practically shaped too, which is why it can swallow 10 carry-on cases to this Hyundai's 7. There's not much space below the floor, nor does Hyundai give you any of the useful cargo furniture items you might expect to find in the boot of a sedan of this sort. Things like bag hooks, floor tie downs, a 12 volt socket, maybe also a warning triangle in the inner boot lid. Forget all of that, or provision for any sort of spare wheel. As usual in an EV, in the event of a puncture, you'll be stranded on the side of the road with a tin of sealant. Disappointingly, you don't get either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split seat back either. So there's no option to slide longer items like skis in between a couple of rear seated folk. The rear seat back split 60-40 for those occasions when you really can't resist the allure of flat pack furniture. Not all EVs in this segment give you extra storage space for the charging needs beneath the bonnet, but you get that here, though not much of it, just 45 litres in this rear-driven model. The frunks in rival models are quite a lot more usable, 35 litres in a Polestar 2 and 117 litres in a Tesla Model 3. As with those rivals, opting for an all-wheel drive variant reduces frunk space substantially, here to the point where it's hardly worth having at all. The frunk of an all-wheel drive Ionic 6 offers just 12 litres of space. Still, it'll be useful perhaps for the storage of valuables. In recent years, Hyundai has discovered that avant-garde design allows it to be increasingly punchy with its asking prices. And so, emboldened by the Ionic 6 model's 2023 World Car of the Year accolade, from the time of launch and at the time of this test in spring 2023, customers were being asked to pay between 47 and 54,000 pounds for an Ionic 6. For reference, the equivalent Ionic 5 hatch was priced at the time of filming from around 43 and a half thousand pounds, but that's with the smaller 58 kilowatt hour battery that Hyundai isn't offering to six customers in our market. A 77 kilowatt hour Ionic 5 would cost about the same as a comparably specified Ionic 6. Let's drill down into the range structure a bit. Now, if your starting point is the 228 PS rear driven model with base premium trim, then a £3,500 extra spend can be used either to upgrade to this test model's plusher ultimate trim level or to get yourself the more powerful 325 PS all-wheel drive powertrain. So it's likely that one way or another, those who buy outright will be spending around £50,000 upwards on an Ionic 6. If you're considering the rear-driven version of this Korean contender, and have taken a look around the market, you might note that this is a fair chunk above the sum required for the other key saloon contender in this segment, the Tesla Model 3, which in rear-driven form was priced at around £43,000 as we filmed. 
Spark was offering an EV driving range figure 33 miles less than this 228 PS Ionic 6. The other car in this class we think a potential Ionic 6 customer might be looking at, the Polestar 2, cost around £49,000 in comparable long range single motor form at the time of this test, so around £2,000 more than the base rear driven Ionic 6, but was offering a considerably higher EV driving range. If you can afford a little more, then similar in concept to this Hyundai is Volkswagen's ID7, though like the Polestar 2, that's actually a five-door hatch. Obviously, there are lots of other mid-sized EVs at this price point, not least two near identically engineered Hyundai Motor Group models, the Kia EV6 and the Genesis GV60, but all of these are more directly targeted by the Ionic 5 SUV hatch, so refer to our test on that if a more obviously crossover influence model in this class would better suit your needs and preferences. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an Ionic 6 that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Hyundai's been with standard kits. So let's take a look at that now. Even the base premium variant comes pretty well kitted out with big 20 inch alloy wheels, piercing dual LED low and high projection headlamps with smart high beam, power folding mirrors, rear tinted windows, all round parking sensors, keyless entry, a Thatcham category one alarm, and smart cruise control with stop and go. Plus there's a powered tailgate, which can activate with a swipe of your foot below the bumper. If you're approaching the car laden down with packages, rather cleverly, it can also be activated using the infotainment systems, dynamic voice recognition system. As with most EVs, you can't have any kind of spare wheel, but you do get a wide portfolio of camera safety kit, which we'll brief you on in a few moments. Inside the two big 12.3 inch screens, the driver's supervision instrument cluster display and the central full touch infotainment display are standard fit. And we'll brief you on media stuff in a second, uh, along with a rear view camera, a heated steering wheel and electrochrome rear view mirror and a wireless charging pad. The two front seats have power adjustment, heating and lumbar support. And the outer positions on the rear bench have heating. Plus, the dual zone air conditioning system has useful auto dehumidify and auto defog climate functions. And the ambient lighting system allows you to choose from a spectrum of 64 colors and six pre-programmable themes selected by color experts. These include concentration, blue and green, healing forest, yellow and green, wonderful day, red and gold, mind care, pink and violet, Meditation, royal blue and blue, and creative moment, which is turquoise and green. We mentioned media stuff. Well, across the range, there are all the usual features on the central screen. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone projection mirroring. A decent four speaker DAB tuner, Bluetooth and dynamic voice recognition system voice control, plus a voice memo feature so you can dictate to the car as you drive and a quiet mode that restricts the volume of the stereo speakers and plays audio output only through the front ones, so any rear seat passengers can get to sleep on longer trips. More importantly, there's an extremely sophisticated navigation system, which is updated with Hyundai's MapCare service and here can work with a clever cloud-based Blue Link connected routing feature. This sees driving routes calculated on a powerful server located in a Blue Link cloud which allows for more accurate traffic forecasting, more precise times of arrival, and more reliable route recalculation. This works with incorporated Hyundai Live services, which alert you to speed cameras and provide accurate information on traffic jams and roadworks. Staying with Blue Link technology, the central screen has a Blue Link connectivity section offering a calendar, weather reports, and vehicle diagnostics menus. There's even a part of it you can program to update you on scores from your favorite sports team. Remember though, that you'll need to pay a subscription for this setup after the first three years of use. And of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? Which predictably in this case is called Hyundai Blue Link. Once it's downloaded onto your smartphone, you can use it to manage your charging regime and locate the nearest charging station. It'll also precondition the climate system 
so that the cabin will be pre-warmed or indeed pre-cooled before you get to it. And there's a last mile navigation feature that will take you on foot to your ultimate destination if you have to park the car a little way away from it, as in a busy city, for instance. Plus, of course, this app will do all the usual things that manufacturer model apps tend to do these days. You can send destinations uh, from your PC to your car. You'll be able to remotely lock or unlock the vehicle, and you'll be advised if the alarm goes off. Using the app via your phone, you can also access maintenance info on your Ionic 6, send places of interest data to the navigation system, and use the Find My Car feature to find the vehicle in a crowded car park if you've forgotten where you put it. If you've activated the central screen's provided valet mode, the app can also tell you how long and how far the car's been driven if you've given it over to be valet parked. Valet mode also restricts access to personal information, your call log on the central screen, for instance. Enough with media features onto the electrified stuff. Now, unlike some other brands, Hyundai doesn't expect you to pay extra for a three pin connected charging cable. This is supplied along with the usual seven pin type two lead with storage space for both within the uh, front compartment beneath the bonnet. There's a 10.5 kilowatt hour three phase onboard charger and unlike some rivals, Hyundai doesn't charge more for a heat pump, which takes warmth from the ambient air for the climate system, rather than relying just on energy sapping ventilation fans to do it. The brand also includes a year's subscription to the Ionity high power network of European chargers. If you can find one of these, you'll get the benefit of the fact that an Ionic 6, thanks to 800 volt electronic architecture, shared only in this segment by other Hyundai, Kia and Genesis EVs, can take a charge of up to 350 kilowatts. Many rivals can only charge at around half that. We should also mention that all Ionic 6s get the V2L or vehicle to load function, giving you sockets both inside and outside the car, which supply up to 3.6 kilowatts of power so that you can charge high power electrical equipment, maybe an electrical bike, a laptop or a drone. Or perhaps you could power various devices, an air pump perhaps, or if say you were camping, maybe a kettle, a microwave, a blender or a small fridge. The interior VL2 socket is a three pin port. You'll need an accessory adapter for functionality with the outside charging port. If you're all in with the whole Ionic 6 concept, you'll want to stretch to the top ultimate trim level we have here, set apart with flush auto door handles and a powered glass sunroof. Parking's a bit easier at this level in the range thanks to a surround view monitor and a parking collision avoidance assist reverse and forward system, which will automatically brake the car at low speeds if you're about to hit something you haven't seen, say a low wall or worse still, a child or a small animal. There's also a remote smart parking assist feature that allows you to remotely park the car from the key fob while standing outside it. Extra drive stuff includes an active sound design system that provides unusual drivetrain sounds as you drive, LED steering wheel lights that alert you to various drive functions, and there's a head-up display with augmented reality, which essentially turns the windshield into a display screen, projecting not only speed and traffic sign info, but also navigation and safety warnings. Inside with Ultimate Spec, you get alloy pedals, eco leather upholstery, cooled ventilation for the front seat and front passenger, relaxation seats that retract back almost horizontally. And there's an upgraded Bose audio system with seven speakers and a subwoofer. On to options. Now, there are two no-cost cabin trim options, both rather doer, either black or light grey. With the base premium model, the upholstery has to be had in black recycled PET yarn cloth. The eco leather you get with this ultimate spec can be had either in black with grey accents or, as in this case, in light grey with blue and orange accents. You'll probably find yourself needing to spend extra on your choice of paint colour. Solid Bite Blue Pearl is the only standard shade. We've got Gravity Gold Matte here, but there are various other metallic or pearl shades if you prefer. The only real option is restricted to Ultimate Trim and is one we'd be hesitant to specify. 
Hyundai's digital side mirror system offers digital side mirrors supposed to give you a clear view of what's happening on both sides of the vehicle, even in bad weather conditions. They claim to give you a wider angle view compared to traditional mirrors with side views projected via two OLED monitors integrated into the corners of the dashboard. But the positioning is in board of that for the conventional door mirrors being replaced. So some adjustment is needed. Too much in our view, given the extra £995 option price and the addition of just nine tenths of a mile of extra range. On to safety. Now, as you'd expect, given this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety showing, which saw it excel in the adult occupant, child occupant and safety assist categories, there's a decent package of camera safety kit. Starting with the usual autonomous braking system, Hyundai's been called Forward Collision Avoidance Assist, a setup that detects pedestrians, cyclists and other vehicles in close proximity. The brands developed this further with a Forward Collision Avoidance Assist junction turning feature, that anticipates oncoming traffic you might be about to turn out in front of at junctions. You'll be warned if that's about to happen and if necessary, the car will be braked to avoid an impact. There's also leading vehicle departure alert so that in an urban queue, when the vehicle in front moves off, so will you. As befits a cutting edge design, the portfolio of semi-autonomous drive assist features is quite lengthy. Hyundai includes blind spot collision avoidance assist, which stops you from pulling out dangerously in the face of oncoming traffic, if necessary, braking to avoid a collision. There's also an LKA or lane keep assist feature, which applies subtle steering lock if you drift out of lane or drift too close to the edge of the roadway. And a lane follow assist setup that keeps you a safe distance behind the vehicle ahead, automatically adjusting the car's speed to suit surrounding traffic. All of this functionality is built into the car's Highway Drive Assist Level 2 system that allows for a limited level of highway-based autonomous driving and can also help you while changing lanes or during evasive steering manoeuvres. There's much more too. We mentioned earlier that the LED headlights come with smart high beam assist so that they dip themselves at night. Driver attention warning constantly monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness, which, if detected, will prompt a warning to stop for a restorative coffee. Rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist will alert you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space, if necessary, applying the brakes. Plus, there's also an intelligent speed limit assist feature, which uses a camera to read speed limit signs along the road, displaying them on the navigation screen. And navigation-based smart cruise control uses the navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves or straights on highways and when activated can automatically adjust the car's speed for safer driving and to suit posted limits. Hyundai has also specifically thought about the safety of rear seat passengers. Rear occupancy alert monitors the back seats using an ultrasonic sensor that helps to detect the movements of children. The system first reminds drivers to check the rear seats when exiting the vehicle with a message on the center instrument cluster display. If the system detects movement in the rear seats after the drivers left their car, it will honk the horn, flash the lights, and send a Blue Link alert to the driver's smartphone via the Blue Link connected car system. Believe it or not, tragedies have occurred where children have accidentally locked themselves in a car or parents have locked children in hot vehicles. Horrifically, in the US alone, more than 800 children have died from heat-related illnesses in vehicles since 1994. And in 55% of these cases, the parent was apparently unaware the child was even in the vehicle. On a really hot day, experts say it only takes a matter of minutes before the heat can overwhelm a child's ability to regulate their internal temperature, their core temperature, can increase three to five times faster than that of an adult. So that's all good. Now, what else? Well, of course, all Ionic 6s come equipped with front and side airbags, as well as curtain airbags and a central bag in the dashboard. There's also auto door unlocking in the event of an impact, as well as ABS braking and electronic stability control to help you avoid one in the first place. An e-call system will alert the emergency services with your GPS location if the airbags go off in an accident. And there's also a tire pressure warning system and hill start control 
to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. In addition, you get multi-collision braking, which brakes the car automatically after you've hit something, so that you're then less likely to go on and hit something else. Safe exit warning, which alerts passengers about to open their doors in the face of oncoming vehicles or cyclists. And intelligent speed limit assist, which can use the standard traffic sign camera to automatically keep you within posted speed limits. It's all very reassuring. We gave you the driving range figures in our driving experience section. They're very class competitive, 338 miles for this rear driven model and 332 miles for the alternative all wheel drive version and very dependent on the sleek aerodynamics said to have been influenced by everything from a Spitfire World War II fighter plane to the shape that a peregrine falcon makes when it dives after prey. The drag factor is also aided by active air flaps, wheel air curtains, wheel gap reducers, separation traps and wheel deflectors. The result of all this is a range capability that's good but is some way off being class leading. This is a moving goalpost, but at the time of filming in spring 2023, the Polestar 2 was currently holding that accolade in long range, single motor, 82 kilowatt hour form, managing up to 395 miles in rear driven form and up to 368 in all wheel drive guys. One of Hyundai's goals though, will have been to outdo Tesla's Model 3, an objective only partly achieved. This rear driven Ionic 6 goes 33 miles further on a single charge than an equivalent rear driven Model 3, but a long range all wheel drive version of that Tesla manages to go 374 miles, 42 miles further than an Ionic 6 all wheel drive. We won't run through all the other competitor range stats here. Suffice to say, that, as you'd hope from the streamlined looks, what you'll get from an Ionic 6 is at the upper end of the EV mileage spectrum. It's interesting to see just how much difference aerodynamics make here with exactly the same drivetrain and battery. This car's boxier Ionic 5 SUV stablemate, which has a CD drag factor of 0.29 to this car's 0.21, goes a substantial 67 miles fewer on each charge. Don't expect too much from aerodynamics though, getting rid of the car's conventional wing mirrors and replacing them with the expensive optional digital mirror system takes you just 0.9 of a mile further on each charge. When this setup is fitted to a rear driven 77.4 kilowatt hour Ionic 6 in markets that offer this car with the smaller 18 inch wheel rims, unlikely to ever be offered here. Apparently this Hyundai will go up to 382 miles between charges. You'll need to use the most frugal eco drive mode and the most arresting max eye pedal level of brake regeneration to get anywhere near to any of the claimed range figures. The all wheel drive Ionic 6 models can also use the front traction motor as well as the rear one for all regenerative braking, providing maximum power back into the battery when slowing down. Lots of tools are provided, of course, to aid your driving frugality. A helpful EV section of the car's centre screen shows battery charge percentage and how far you can go with the climate system either on or off. There's also an EV setting screen to set charger limits for either AC or DC chargers. And there are energy information screens to show you the current battery drain from driving climate and electronic functions plus the current needed time for charging from either a DC or AC charger. An energy consumption history screen shows you your current consumption graphically in miles per kilowatt hour and a meter at the base of the instrument screen shows your mile per kilowatt hour consumption in real time. A word about this car's state-of-the-art lithium-ion polymer battery pack which uses clever silicon carbide transistors instead of the more usual silicon transistors. The silicon carbide ones offer less electrical resistance, improving efficiency. Something also enhanced by the standard heat pump which draws heat for the climate system from the surrounding ambient air rather than needing the ventilation fan to do it. Hence a useful energy saving, particularly 
in really cold conditions. As usual with an EV, there's also a remote climate control system accessible via a provided app, allowing you to preheat or pre-cool the cabin prior to your journey while the vehicle's still plugged in. Unlike with the Ionic 5, there's no small battery option in the model lineup. Other markets get a 53 kilowatt hour rear driven Ionic 6 model that won't be sold here. The energy dense 77.4 kilowatt hour long range battery pack, all UK Ionic 6 models do get, contains 384 cells and is paired with the advanced 800 volt electrical infrastructure used by all mid to large size Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis EVs. It can charge at up to 350 kilowatts, about double the speed you get with most class rivals, the vast majority of which still persist with old tech 400 volt systems. To be able to use this extra charge speed, you'd need to hook up to one of the new generation HPC or high power charging stations springing up around Europe, most operated by a joint manufacturer funded network called Ionity a year's membership of which comes with the car. At the time of this test, in spring 2023, there were only 1,938 HPC stations operating in Europe, but the promise from Ionacy as we filmed was that this number would rise to almost 7,000 by 2052, or one every 100 to 125 miles. At one of these HPC stations, a 10 to 80% top up would take just 18 minutes with 62 miles of range for every five minutes of charging with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. But of course, right at present, it's far more likely that you'll be using a more conventional 50 kilowatt fast charging station, which requires 73 minutes to charge this Hyundai from 10 to 80%. A range of different charging stations are included as part of the brand's pan-European public charging service, Charge My Hyundai, which offers access to more than 440,000 charging points in 30 countries across Europe. Customers can use these stations via a provided RFID or radio frequency identification card or by a provided app. But as we filmed, Hyundai was also about to introduce a plug and charge system offering automatic authentication and automated billing. Finding charging stations should be easy via the car's cloud-based connected routing feature, which illustrates public battery replenishment points along your route on the cabin's center screen with clickable icons that show you whether the locations offer AC, DC or ultra fast charging. In the unlikely event that you simply couldn't find anywhere to hook up, then in theory at least, assuming you had a helpful friend with another electric vehicle, you could even use either of the two provided V2L ports, one inside and one outside the car, to charge from another EV, thanks to the car's clever V2L or vehicle to load function. Though because the feed is on a 3.6 kilowatt trickle charge, it would take rather a long time. When it comes to conventional replenishment of the main drive battery, mostly of course you'll be charging at home. The times required here depend of course on your property's power supply and the capacity of the wall box you fit. But to give you an example, an 11 kilowatt wall box connected to a three phase supply would require seven hours and 10 minutes to charge the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery to 100%. If you use a lesser 7.4 kilowatt household war box, you're looking at 10 hours and 30 minutes. Plug into a conventional three pin domestic socket and of course replenishment will take a lot longer, 30 hours and 45 minutes to be exact. Remember that your home's cheap off-peak electricity allowance is likely to be for no more than around six hours. So it'll be important to use the EV screen's set departure times and schedule charging and target temperature menus or use the Charge My Hyundai app so that you can charge efficiently. There's also an EV charge transfer settings menu allowing you to set a target percentage charge for your next departure. When we tested the Ionic 5, we quoted a well to wheels emission figure of 35.9 grams per kilometer, taking into account the emissions impact of the power station energy generation needed to drive this car. 
We wouldn't expect this Ionic 6 model's environmental footprint to be much different from that. Still, the government believes the EV zero emissions mantra, which means that until 2025, there's no first year road tax license to pay and you won't be saddled with inner city congestion charges. More significantly, also until 2025, as with all EVs, your company benefiting kind tax rating will be pitched at Group 2, which at the time of this test, in spring 2023, meant an annual payment of £216 for higher rate 40% earners or £188 for lower rated earners, which is massively less than you'd pay for a similarly sized and powered combustion engine model, even an electrified one. To give you some perspective on that, we'll tell you that Hyundai's Tucson full hybrid SUV is BIK rated at 30%, with the plug-in hybrid version BIK rated at 12%. Servicing intervals are every two years or 20,000 miles, whichever comes sooner, and Hyundai offers flexible service plans to meet individual requirements, and whatever package you opt for, it should be cheaper than you pay for a combustion model, because all the maintenance is so much simpler. There are fewer fluids to top up, and thanks to the regen system, brake pads and discs last a lot longer. It's also worth mentioning that the center screen blue link section has a vehicle diagnostics menu that allows you to check steering, brake, camera safety system, and tire status on a real-time basis. As for ownership peace of mind, well, you get Hyundai's usual comprehensive five-year unlimited mileage warranty, which is far better than the rather mean three-year deal that most other rival EVs in this segment offer. It's backed up by 12 months of breakdown cover and five years of free annual vehicle health checks. True, a similarly engineered rival Kia EV6 claims to better this package by offering a seven-year warranty deal, but there you're limited to 100,000 miles. For this Hyundai, there's a separate eight-year or 125,000 mile warranty for the battery, though this is linked to a minimum capacity caveat, which means that any required repairs will return the battery to at least 70% of its original capacity. There's also a five-year annual health check, a three-year map care navigation update program, a roadside assistance package, and a 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. You might be a bit shocked by the insurance groupings here if you're moving over from a combustion model. Insurance groupings are high with any EV, mainly because brokers worry about the increased cost of accident repair with electric vehicles and the possible need to replace the entire drive system battery if you were to be involved in a collision. This base rear-driven 228 PS Ionic 6 is rated at Group 36E or 37E and the top all-wheel drive 325 PS variant rates at Group 41E. Finally, residual value should be strong. When we tested the Ionic 5, industry experts were quoting very class competitive stats of between 52 and 56% over a 36 month, 30,000 mile ownership period. Figures which we'd expect this Ionic 6 to match or even slightly improve on. Not long ago, the most interesting choices you could make if you wanted a cutting-edge, mid-sized, plush electric vehicle were all conventional SUVs. Now, you could argue that it's more avant-garde to choose something far less obviously of the crossover genre. Three of the segment's most advanced contenders, the Tesla Model 3, the Polestar 2 and this Ionic 6, all take that route. All three cars are interesting, forward-thinking and innovative, but for very different reasons. That Hyundai can compete on equal terms against competitors of this calibre says a lot for how far the company's come over the last few years. The brand has seized the EV revolution as a chance to reinvent itself, and cars like the Ionic 6 are doing just that. This, another design from a model line that, in the company's words, is changing the paradigm of EV customer experience. The brand's 800 volt charging system is certainly doing just that for customers in this segment of the market. But the mark knows very well that despite the electrified streamliner styling, this six is still some way off the highest class standard when it comes to EV driving range. 
the trumpeted mileage figures between spells of battery replenishment are dependent on so many caveats that few owners will ever achieve them. But the possibility of driving around 300 miles between charges is real enough. And that's a step forward for this segment. So is the Ionic 6. Is any brand currently faster than Hyundai at translating advanced concept to reality? What's even more impressive is that this car does so without diluting extreme stylistic expression into something more palatable. That's certainly not happened here. Park an Ionic 6 in the high street and people are going to look. Invite others to join you inside and passengers are going to comment. If that isn't the feel you're after with your new EV, lots of other brands will better satisfy you. But if it is, this car is one you need to try. <laughs>